Good morning. Today we are going to explore the forces related to drag or air resistance. So the force due to air resistance or drag depends on several factors. In general, drag increases as the speed of the object increases. Here's an example of the capsule returning from space to Earth. And as we can see, it's generating a lot of heat as it re-enters. That's because the capsule is traveling at a high speed. The speed is so great, the drag force is so large that heat is being generated. So faster moving objects generate more drag. In general, air resistance also increases as the size of the object increases. Actually, the cross-sectional area of the object increases. So I'm going to drop the same sheet of paper two different ways. And what you're going to see is that when it's dropped on its edge, where the cross-sectional area is very small, it'll drop a lot faster because there's less drag. So let's see that here. Notice when it was dropped on its edge, it fell very quick. Very little cross-sectional area. It's not encountering as much air when it's dropped on its edge. And so, very little drag. When we drop it on its flat side, it encounters more air. So more drag. Now people in sports have been taking advantage of this for many years. Notice a cyclist. The cyclist is trying to decrease their frontal area here to reduce drag. In addition, the skier is also trying to decrease that area to reduce drag. We can represent drag in physics with a vector. Notice the vector is opposing the motion of the person. Drag is always drawn in the opposite direction that the person is moving in. Let's watch this video and see what happens. So you notice during that video that we have James Bond trying to catch up to another person. And in order to do that, he actually changes his profile. Initially, James Bond has this position. Top speed at that position, according to several websites, is around 200 kilometers per hour. In order to catch the other person, James Bond changes his profile slightly. He becomes more aerodynamic. Notice in this profile, he has a very large cross-sectional area. That means there's more drag and the top speed he can achieve is lower. In this profile, that cross-sectional area is smaller. That means he can achieve a greater speed because there's less drag force. Now at the very beginning of the jump, his weight, or the force of gravity, is much greater than drag. And so notice the arrow for the weight, or the force of gravity, is much longer than the arrow drawn for drag. However, as his speed increases, the drag force increases. Eventually, according to several websites, after 35 to 45 seconds, the weight will be exactly equal to the drag force. At this point, when the weight is equal to the drag force, his acceleration will be zero. When the acceleration is zero, we say that the person has achieved terminal velocity. Now in this position, the terminal velocity is around 200 kilometers per hour. However, by just slightly angling your body, so that you have a smaller cross-sectional area, so that you're punching through less air, the terminal velocity can be much higher, between 240 to 290 kilometers per hour. All right, 
Let's look at a sample problem. Example one, calculate the acceleration of a skydiver at the beginning of a jump when there is no drag. So that's our goal. The yellow vector represents the force of gravity or the weight. That's how we calculate the force of gravity. It's always mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8. When you work through the math, that's 882 newtons. We have to choose a positive direction. The positive direction is always the direction of motion or the direction of acceleration. So in this case, we're going to say that the positive direction is down. When we write our F net statement, our net force statement, there's only one force. We're assuming no drag at the beginning of a jump. And that's a safe assumption because the speed at the beginning of a jump is close to zero. So we say F net or net force equals the weight or gravity, Fg. According to Newton's second law, F net is always ma. And solving for acceleration, we get 9.8 meters per second squared. This should not have surprised you. So now we're going to work on the same problem, except this time there is an additional force. So calculate the acceleration of a skydiver when the drag force is 600 newtons. So again, the force of gravity doesn't change. It's 882 newtons. Positive direction is still down. Why is it down? It's down because the person is accelerating downwards. That's their direction of movement. But this time, what's different? Well, this time you have the 600 newtons opposing the motion. So when we write our F net statement, it's not just simply the weight. The net force this time is the weight subtracted from the 600 newtons, the drag force. F net is again MA, and that's 882 subtract 600. Substituting the mass, we get an acceleration of 3.1 meters per second squared. Now, does that make sense? It should. When they're in free fall, they accelerate 9.8. But drag force prevents that acceleration from being 9.8. Eventually, remember, of course, the acceleration will be equal to zero when the drag force, in this case, equals exactly the force of gravity, or the weight, which is 882 newtons. So at 600 newtons, it's not quite zero. It's only 3.1 the person will still be speeding up. And as they speed up though, remember, the drag force will increase. With significant digits, we say the acceleration is three meters per second squared. Why? Because 90 here only has one significant digit and 600 also only has one significant digit. Hence, 3.1 becomes three. So here's example three. Calculate the acceleration of a skydiver, but this time the skydiver is much heavier, 180 kilograms. Drag force hasn't changed. Please pause the video now. All right, I hope you tried the question. Of course, when you've increased the mass, you've increased the weight. And there is the math. F net is Fg minus 600. Ma is equal to Fg minus 600. This time, notice there's a larger net force. It's 1,164 newtons. And we get a larger acceleration of 6.47 meters per second squared. To one sig fig, that's only six meters per second squared. Why one sig fig? Because of the 600 here, which only has one significant digit. The two key factors for drag force, cross-sectional area and the speed. As both of those increase, the drag force increases. Have a great day. Bye-bye.